Hey everyone, this is Erica from Four Barrel Fitness. For those of you who haven't met me, I'm one of the coaches at our new Albany location. Gabby and I are super excited to get this challenge kicked off with you guys. We firmly believe that nutrition is the foundation of everything we do here at 4B. We are passionate about educating you guys on nutrition basics and how to practically apply that in your everyday life. We've partnered with Healthy Steps Nutrition to help us launch our new and improved 4B nutrition coaching program. They provide us with dietitian back training, content, and resources to help us run a quality and professional nutrition program just for you. With their help, we'll be able to provide you more accountability than ever before by allowing easier weekly communications, check-ins, and more consistent feedback throughout the challenge. The purpose of this presentation is to give you the practical tools you need to optimize your nutrition for the long term. I want to keep it short, simple, and actionable, so we'll start with a quick outline on why nutrition is important, followed by a base understanding of what makes up good nutrition, and then we'll wrap things up by how to easily put healthy shopping, prepping, and eating into practice to meet your goals and your lifestyle. Today we're going to be talking through quite a bit of nutrition information and we recognize that it can feel like a lot, but rest assured that the action items for the challenge will be to the point and very specific so that you know exactly what to focus on during the week. Our hopes are that you will come back to the seminar often to refresh your memory on nutrition basics and how to make them your own. So on the agenda today, we'll be focusing on tips to success goal setting, learning the foundations of nutrition, interpreting the meal plan, your next steps, and picking a winner. To the left of the screen, you will see a pyramid. This shows nutrition as being the foundation of all the activities we do in the gym. We believe in the power of good nutrition and know just how impactful it can be in our performance and also well-being. The best part of this is that it doesn't even have to be complicated to be effective. Here is a list of things that are good focus points when it comes to improving your nutrition. First, are you consistently eating every three hours? If we aren't eating consistently, it can often lead to getting overly hungry, which leads to choosing foods that aren't always the most nutrient dense and overeating them well past our fullness levels. Not eating regularly can also cause spikes in our blood sugar levels and can also hinder our, our ability to recognize when we are feeling hungry signals during the day. Consistency is king. Number two, do you balance every meal and snack with a source of protein, carbs, and fats? Balancing our meals allows us to eat adequate amounts of macronutrients throughout the day. Macronutrients are the building blocks of our bodies. Each one of these plays a very important role in the body, and we will dive deeper into each of them later in the presentation. Do you drink 80 plus ounces of water each day? Hydration plays a key role in many processes our body undergoes each day. Our bodies need water and they need a lot of it. Do you eat around your workouts? Do you eat well around your workouts in a way that will boost your performance? We'll talk more about that later in the presentation. Are you eating out? Knowing some tips and tricks when it comes to eating out can help you stay focused on your goals and confident in your ability to choose foods that will make you feel good while still enjoying time with your loved ones when you are out to eat. Are you conscious of what and how much you are consuming each day? Throughout this challenge, we'll be tracking our food just to shine a light on the certain foods that we are eating and paying attention to how they are making us feel. This is an added level of, of accountability for the challenge. We'll be using MyFitnessPal and a meal tracking paper if MyFitnessPal is something you would prefer not to use. Do you, focus on, do you focus more on quality or quantity? Throughout this challenge, we'll teach you to focus on both. You could be eating too much of the quality food and not enough of quality sources. We will be touching on each of these throughout the presentation to shine a light on some practical applications we can use during the challenge. We're going to dive into each piece of the puzzle. Each person is, a, is different and each person has different needs when it comes to their nutrition journey. We need to look at the entire picture in order to properly move forward in our own individual nutrition practice. This is not a crash diet we are prescribing. We hope that this is the start of a very long-lasting, healthy relationship to food for you. We talk about goals quite a bit around here, and this nutrition challenge will be no different. We need to take the time to think out our goals in order for us to figure out the proper steps we need to make moving forward. You need to define what success looks like for you. When you have a defined goal and action steps, you are going to be much more motivated to make that happen. We want our goals to be as specific, 
measurable, attainable, realistic, and time sensitive as we can get them. Start thinking about what this means for you. What are some goals that you have for this challenge? Write them down and set some actionable steps you can take. Once you have some goals in mind, it's time to get to the why of them. Why do you have that goal? In each coaching session or in coaching session, sessions that we do, we often use the five whys drill. We adopt it from Precision Nutrition. Once you write down a goal, ask yourself why you want to do it five different times. It helps you get to the root of your goal and develop a stronger reason behind why you want to accomplish what you're seeking out to do. Be realistic with your goals. For this challenge, we want you guys to be focusing on what you can accomplish within these four weeks. Always have an action plan for your goals so that you have a focal point and can keep your mind on one goal at a time. Most importantly, don't give up. This is hard work and remember, nothing easy or nothing worthwhile ever comes easy. We need to work hard at our goals and not give up when things get tough. Accountability is huge for this. This is why we wanted to have partners for this challenge, just to be an added layer of accountability and support. For this challenge, we want you to be setting both long-term and short-term goals for that you have. For challenge purposes, our main focus will be the short-term goal you set for this challenge specifically. Realistically, if weight loss is a goal, shooting for 1% body fat and 4 pounds of body weight would be possible for the next 28 days. Once you have this goal, set out or run it through our SMART goal setting. Make it specific. Put some numbers in there to make it measurable. Make this goal attainable by the end of the challenge. Make sure it's realistic for you in this season of life. And make sure it's set to be completed by the end of the challenge. Now it's your turn. Go ahead and pause this presentation and spend the next 15 minutes or so thinking through some long-term and short-term goals. Write them down and share them with your partner. This is a huge piece of accountability of the accountability portion for this challenge. And also, once you write them down and say them out loud, it makes them feel more real and increases the likelihood of you following through with them. So let's dive into some of the foundational pieces of our nutrition. The first one of our macronutrients we'll be talking about is carbohydrates. This is our body's main source of fuel. I also like to add that using carbohydrates you, using carbohydrates as fuel spares protein from being used as energy. Carbs should comprise about 40% of our diet. There are different types of carbohydrates. Fiber is a non-digestible form of carbohydrate, which delays glucose absorption, decreases cholesterol levels, and aids with reducing triglyceride levels. There are higher GI foods and lower GI foods. Glycemic index is what we would call GI. This tells us how fast our blood sugar will rise after eating food. Glycemic index indicates how much of an insulin response our body will have, have to produce and break down what we just ate. Remember, insulin response is an inflammatory response. Let's talk about some artificial sweeteners. Studies show that an increase in weight gain, body fat, and calorie carbohydrate intake with high levels of artificial sweeteners. It also causes increases in our sugar cravings. An excess of sugar in the body can cause your body to crave more carbs and can cause more inflammation in the body. So what are some good sources of carbohydrates? We're gonna be shooting to fill most of our carbohydrate sources um, with sources that are low in sugar and high in fiber. Half of our plate should be dedicated to non-starchy vegetables, such as broccoli, carrots, asparagus, cauliflower. A fourth of our plate should be dedicated to starchy and complex carbohydrates. So some fruit sources would be strawberries, apples, pears, blueberries, and raspberries. Some starchy veggies would be things like sweet potato, peas, acorn squash. And some starch options would be things like brown rice, quinoa, oatmeal, beans. Some additional sources that may be consumed in moderation are things like rice cakes, fingerling potatoes, Ezekiel bread, banana, grapes, and melons. The next macronutrient we're going to be going over is protein. Protein is the building block of our body. It's helpful for regulating body function and hormone regulation. There are two types of amino acids. There are essential amino acids, which can't be synthesized by the body. Therefore, we need to obtain these proteins from a food source. 
And then there are complementary proteins, which are two or more foods that when eaten together, they provide all essential amino acids, such as legumes, rice, mushrooms, broccoli. This could be helpful, particularly for someone who is a vegetarian. We want to stick with mostly lean meats, and this looks like sources such as chicken breast, fish, egg whites, and turkey. Below that are sources that are fine to consume in moderation, such as large eggs, medium fat cheese, dark meat chicken, or a sirloin steak. And then there are some additional higher fat meats that should be limited, such as full fat dairy, most red meats, bacon, and fried meats. Then we have fats. Fats often get a bad rap because there is this common misconception that fat makes you fat, which is completely not true. We need fat in our diet and we want to be consuming mostly whole food sources of fat. Fat is an important component of our diet. Healthy fats in moderation is a component of our membranes, aids in absorption of fat soluble vitamins and is used as a source of energy. Healthy sources include things like avocado, nuts, nut butters, seeds, coconut oil, and olive oil. Omega-3 is often a fat deficiency we see in many clients, so supplements are recommended to ensure that you are consuming adequate amounts of the DHA slash EPA. We have fish oil available in the lobby if you are interested in checking that out. Now that we have a good idea of why we need each macronutrient, let's chat about how to shape your plate to be balanced. First, we want to make sure we're staying hydrated. Drinking mostly water and limiting artificially flavored beverages is your best bet. When choosing meat sources, shoot to get mainly lean cuts. Throughout this challenge, we will urge you guys to prep as many meals as you can on your own and focus on prepping your meat in ways such as grilling, baking, or boiling. A big focus of this challenge is loading up on whole nutrient-dense foods. Whole grains, fruits, and veggies provide fiber, vitamins, and minerals that your body needs. Real foods should be our main goal. Fiber plays many different roles in our body to help you stay full, keep you regular, and aids in lowering cholesterol levels. So it's important that we're getting an adequate amount of that in, and we will when we're choosing more whole nutrient-dense foods. As you grocery shop, try to shop as much of the perimeter as you can. There you will find real whole sources of food that our body responds best to. As you're grocery shopping, check out your labels as a way to help you start seeing the quality sources of food that you are putting into your body. Labels are written from most abundant to least abundant. So if sugar is number one on the ingredient list, that tells us that there is an abundance of sugar in that packaged good. This is helpful to know if you are checking out the food as you are checking out the food you would like to purchase. An easy way to sim to simplify our macronutrients and ensure balanced meals is through something called the plate method. As we go through this challenge, try to fill half of your plate with non-starchy veggies, one fourth of your plate with protein, and one fourth with complex carbohydrate sources. You may notice that fat isn't listed on here and that is because you will naturally get in fat throughout your meat and the way you prepare your food. For example, if you cooked your food in ghee or butter, that would be your added fat in your meal. If you feel you need some extra fat, simply add in some nuts, seeds, or avocado to your meal. This challenge will come with four weeks of a meal plan. I use this term very loosely and I don't want you guys, I don't want this to be the focal point of this challenge. This is simply a four week meal idea list to help you determine what balanced eating looks like throughout the day and hopefully it will give you some new meals, new meal ideas to help keep your meals exciting and yummy. Depending on your goals for the challenge, there will be different ranges. Women looking to lose weight should stick with the portion sizes on the low end of the ranges. Women looking to improve performance or gain muscle and men looking to lose weight should stick with the medium or the middle of the ranges. Men looking to improve performance should focus on the high end of the ranges. You'll notice that some meals will have little stars next to it and that means that there is a recipe on the Healthy Steps Nutrition website. Logging food will be an aspect of this challenge and you will have the option to use MyFitnessPal or a paper food log. 
Once again, this is not the point of the challenge and I don't want you guys to feel the pressure to log and track everything perfectly. This is just an added source of accountability and will help you focus and practice building balanced meals throughout the month. On the meal plan, all sources are cooked. For example, one cup of oatmeal is not going to be the raw version. It will be the already cooked version of your oatmeal. Moving on to meal prepping, this will be super important to do throughout the challenge in order to ensure success and consistency. Getting into a routine of doing this each week builds momentum to your nutrition practice and also saves so much time during the week. Get some helpful tools to help you in this process such as a crock pot or an instant pot, some Tupperware containers, and a muffin tin. Carve out space each week dedicated to this. Make your grocery list, head to the grocery, and then prep your meals all in a batch. For me, most weekends it looks like starting with some sort of meat I throw in the crock pot. While that's still cooking, I'll turn on my rice cooker, then I'll start the oven, cut up the veggies I want to roast, and then once those are in the oven, I cut up some veggies that I will leave raw until I'm ready to prepare them or eat as is. Starting with the foods that take the longest will help your, you batch your work with efficiency. It may take some trial and error, but keep practicing until you find what works for you. Maybe you and your partner could batch some recipes for the week and you guys could swap out meals with each other to create even more variety throughout the week. Work together as often as you can with your partner. It definitely helps. Start thinking about what you want to plan and prepare for this upcoming week. Maybe write down some meal ideas um, as some ideas for what you'd like to prep next week. If you have been around for be very long, you know that we are firm believers that consistency is king. Consistency is what makes those small daily habits and creates long lasting health and allows you to reach those big goals that you have. We aren't looking for perfection. We're just looking for consistency. For starters, try to be eating something every three to five hours to avoid getting overly hungry and to allow blood sugar levels to maintain balance throughout the day. Once again, trying to eat as many balanced meals as you can, pairing protein, carbs, and a little bit of fat in each meal that you can. This is where the planning piece comes into play. Take into consideration your daily schedule and make sure you are planning meals that will fit into that routine well. If you are someone who often forgets to eat throughout the day, it can be helpful to set a timer on your phone as a reminder to eat something so you aren't letting yourself get too hungry. Hydration is a key player in reaching the goals that you have. It is vital to our overall health and well-being. When we don't get enough water, it can impact our metabolic processes, energy levels, hunger cues, and can cause us to feel groggy and fatigued. We want to be at least drinking 80 ounces per day, closer to 100 ounces when you take exercise into consideration. If you're someone who doesn't like the taste of plain water, try to add in some fruit or mint or give it to give it some flavor. At 4B, we recommend getting a water bottle that you can carry with you everywhere to serve as a reminder. If you often forget to drink throughout the day, try setting a timer on your phone to remind you to drink something every few hours. When it comes to alcohol, we encourage you guys to be mindful of your choices. Oftentimes, alcoholic beverages are loaded with sugar and can add additional calories that provide no nutritional benefit. Also, alcohol increases recovery time and decreases your body's ability to rebuild muscle after a tough workout. Going back to the hydration piece of things, when you're drinking alcohol, try to drink water in between beverages to prevent some added dehydration. We definitely need to be eating around our workouts. A common misconception we often hear is, I should work out on an empty stomach to burn fat. With the CrossFit style of workouts we do, you will not be burning fat on an empty stomach. We need to be adding in some protein plus carbs to restore glycogen stores first thing in the morning to make sure we have the fuel needed for our workout. If you're someone who tends to get nauseous before a workout, try consuming a liquid which will digest a bit quicker for you. So what's the best type of protein powder? Ideally, we choose a whey protein source over soy, but we have a few athletes that prefer not to use whey, so a pea protein or an egg white protein source will work just as fine. Within about 90 minutes of your workout, try to get in some protein plus carbohydrate. Some sample options would be a protein shake mixed with water plus an applesauce packet, or a protein shake mixed with coconut water. Moving on to coffee. 
we know that the half-life of coffee lasts eight to 10 hours. So that means if you are drinking coffee later in the day, it will impact your sleep, whether you feel it or not. It's also important to take into consideration what you are putting into your coffee. Oftentimes, specialty drinks like a Starbucks Frappuccino or a Dunkin' Donuts light and sweet beverage can be packed with added sweeteners. These simple sugars don't leave us feeling satisfied for very long and can skew our hunger signals, leaving us craving more. A pro tip for flavoring coffee would be try to add in some almond or coconut milk to add some flavor in. If you brew your own at home, you can also add some cinnamon to the grounds and it will add some cinnamon flavor to your cup. Sleep is so important and plays a vital role in how our body feels and functions. If we aren't getting enough sleep, our hormones will start to get a little jacked up. Leptin, which is our home hormone that is responsible for feeling full and satisfied, will decrease. And ghrelin, which is the hormone that lets us know when we are hungry, is increased. And our cortisol levels will increase as well. So basically, your body is so hungry for energy due to lack of sleep, it will compensate through our hormones to incorrectly let us know when we are hungry and full, leading to you feeling more tired, more stressed, and less satisfied with what you're eating throughout the day. Getting adequate sleep also helps boost your recovery after tough workouts. Long story short, we need to sleep and get sleep in adequate amounts as often as we can. Picking a winner is going to be based on participation, so turning in all four weekly tracking sheets at the end of the challenge, and it will also take into consideration the percentage of the results, not actual numbers. We want this to be a fair playing field, and we also want to reinforce that this is to help you guys build a healthy relationship with food that lasts much longer than the 28 days. The small daily habits of eating quality foods, adequate portions, staying hydrated, sleeping well, and staying consistent are much more important to us than you guys losing X amount of body weight. Focus on healthy habits and the body composition piece will fall into place naturally. We want you guys to be engaging with each other through the challenge group on the HSN app, posting pictures of the new recipes that you are trying and encouraging each other along the way. Challenges are so much more fun when you are building support and accountability among each other. Also, make sure to tag hashtag 4B Nutrition as your post challenge, as you post challenge related pictures so we can see your progress and your hard work. Check the challenge welcome email to see what the winning prize will be for our first place team. We are so excited to get things started with you guys. As you go through this challenge, please never hesitate to reach out to me or Gabby with any questions that may come up. This challenge is step one of phase one of our nutrition program. This is designed specifically to easily flow into additional nutrition coaching if that is something you'd like to do at the end of the month. Accountability is often the most challenging piece of nutrition, so we want you guys to know that we are always here for help. Good luck with this challenge, guys. We cannot wait to see all the progress that you guys make this month.